All right, where is that gun I'm looking for? Uh, whatever. Hey friends, how you doing? Tyler Patner, we're back again with another installment uh, where Tom Gaylord and I, the godfather of air guns himself, talk all things air guns. Today, we are talking about long range air gunning, where it started, where it's come to now, what long range was like 10 years ago when I got into this, because let me tell you, it's changed quite a bit. Anyway, settle in, hope you enjoy the video, throw us a like if you do, comment down below, let us know what you thought, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you at the end. Now, where's that gun? So, yeah, long range shooting. Uh-huh. Obviously, it's become more of a thing over the last couple of years. You oh, know, you got yeah. a bunch of competitions all over the place. Yeah. Hundred yard bench rest is now a thing. Money, uh, money, money. Absolutely. Hey, you know, you, you gotta <laughs> gotta do something to bring the folks in, right? Sure. Makes it interesting it too. It does. But where did this all start? Well, Tyler. I would love to lie and tell you I know, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is it probably started a lot earlier than what I'm about to say, but I do know this. In the 1920s, centerfire rifle ammunition uh, was getting faster and faster and more and more accurate. Um, the 250-3000 had just gone or was about to go 3,000 feet per second. Oh boy, that was a big deal. The 22 Hornet, which is a 22 center fire, they were trying to shoot one inch groups at 100 yards. That was a big deal. Sure. And you could if you really worked at it. Well, as time went on into the 30s and 40s, the groups got smaller and smaller. And, and finally, today we have 35 pound rail guns that uh, <laughs> they, they, they talk about tenth of an inch groups. Yep. Okay. But that one inch group, that, that just seems to be the holy grail. So along comes the 22 long rifle. Well, they aren't shooting groups at 100 yards, right. but then they started to. Um, maybe in the 50s and 60s, uh, there were some target, well, the target guns were older than that, but guys were trying to shoot smaller and smaller groups and they just stretched the distance out. 25 yards, 50 yards, and the holy grail was 100 yards again trying to shoot those one inch groups. Well, now we have air guns that are shooting one inch groups and better at 100 yards. Now, it sounds like water under the bridge, nothing's changed, but the matter of fact, we've gone from, from center fires to rim fires to air guns. Right. A lot's changed. I'll tell you, when I got into air guns, like. 12 or 13 years ago, you were talking about pre-charge guns shooting at max 50 yards. Right. And, and for, a, for anything to shoot sub one inch at 50 yards was like, wow. You know, and there were a lot of guns that could do that and do better than that at the time. You know, your high-end $1,000 PCPs, which was kind of the highest, you know, as far as sporting guns go uh, at that point in time, you know, those were guns that were capable of three quarters of an inch, maybe half inch on a really good windless day. Exactly. A and I look at in just a handful of years, uh -huh. how far that got pushed and how quickly where I've shot three quarter inch groups at a hundred yards indoors, no wind, you know, and, and it's just like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And look what it's done to the guns. I always talk about the four small bore calibers, 177, 20, 22, and 25, but we're shooting 30s. Yep. And we're shooting bigger. Yep. But the 30 is kind of like the new deal. The 30 on a nice day and the 25, they, they kind of vie for position, but the 30 is where most guys like it. Yeah, well, it does a really great job of consistency in the wind. Right. Um, and not to say that the 25 and even some of those uh, heavier 22s, 22s don't do a good job of it. Um, but the 30, at least in my experience, is a bit more predictable in that wind. Um, but there's so many great options now. And sure, like the cost of the guns has come up. Some of the features on a lot of those guns have come up quite a bit too, you know, with your adjustable regulators and just having a regulator and everything to begin with uh, is a thing now. 
you know, there are a lot of those features that have been really elevated to a point where the performance of the guns is consistent enough yeah. to be that good that far. And yeah. now you have guys, especially as we've seen air gun slugs come along, which not a competition thing yet, at least in bench rest, but that's really pushing what most of us, I probably you, for me for sure, thought were even possible with a small bore. Absolutely did, yeah. Yeah, slugs, are you kidding? 10 yards, <laughs> maybe 20. Yeah. But no, no, not, not, not 100 yards. And they, my blog readers want me to shoot slugs at 100 yards. I just want to shoot at 100 yards. Right. That to me is still a challenge. Uh, I do better with big bores at 100 than I do with small bores. But, but I don't do what some of these guys, and you talk about these guys and the guns, how they've gotten better and better. How about these monster magazines that hold oh, sure. so many pellets? And, and the guns are now competition guns. Yeah. And there's, there's a focus on that because there's a lot of money if you're a good shot. Sure, but it's hard to be consistent. I, you know, you talk about people that think that take going from their backyard to a big competition right. like a Pyramid Air Cup and RMAC and EBR or whatever. Uh, the same thing applies to any competition set, by the way. Like whether it's field target, 10 meter, it doesn't matter. What you're doing at home does not apply when you have game day nerves, big money on the line, some guy you look up to from the internet sitting right five feet from you shooting, right. you know, whatever the case may be, it's a completely different environment and a real game changer. So look, it's great to be able to shoot amazing groups in your backyard, but can you do it over a couple days of competition and end up in a money spot, right? It's very difficult. Well, I'll tell you what I see. I see the technology, the guns, and the pellets has advanced because of these long range uh, matches. Uh, I look at these raw guns. Oh my gosh, they're so accurate. I think I shot 10 shots in three one hundredths of an inch at 25 yards. I've never done that in my life. Not with a 10 meter gun at 10 meters. Sure. But at 25 yards with, and this is a 50, 60 foot pound 22 caliber gun. Well, it's not just raw. There's uh, FX builds good guns. Uh, Day State builds sure. good guns. Thomas and all the other names yeah. that we know. Yeah. The technology is advancing, and we're not all going to drive Cobras, 427 Cobras. But because there is a 427 Cobra, we are going to get a car that's fast, and it'll be one that we can buy, one we can afford. And that's going to happen in air guns too. Yeah. Some of that technology is going to fall off those guns and stay at the price points that we can afford. That's a really good point. You know, you do start to see, I remember the Pyramid Air Cup 2019, when we first 100 yard bench rest competition that we hosted, Umarex brought a couple guys with some gauntlets, right? And yeah. everybody was kind of like, ha ha ha. Yeah. I was you one know. of them. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. You know, I, I shot those guns. Did you get some damn good groups out of those? Yeah, you do. Uh, but it takes work, right? It, it's, I think a lot of people forget that what you get with those higher end guns is a like ease of use factor that I can't quite put into words. Yeah. Um, but there's something about shooting them where it's just easier to shoot well. Um, but if you put the time in, you put the effort in, you really learn some of those less expensive guns, they can compete. And, and, a, right. and one or two guys, I, I think one guy actually made it into the finals. So, you know, made it out of his, uh, you know, his group into potentially winning some money. I don't think he ended up doing it, but you know, just to be in the final 25 people or whatever, sure. competing for that with what was essentially, I think kind of what turned into a gauntlet too, basically. Uh, so a four or $500 setup, you know, that's pretty intriguing. And to be fair, I remember the 2019 Pyramid Air Cup and we had a crosswind on that range. That's a nasty, that nasty something place. something else. Yeah. I, it wasn't a 20 mile an hour wind, but it was gusting and it was hard to dope the wind. Sure. Yeah. I, I've been to all the venues that host the big, you know, sure. 100 yard bench rest competitions and none of them are easy from a wind perspective. And sure. they all present their 
own difficulties and challenges. And the question and is, where's the wind the worst? Is it when it's close to you yep. or when it's downrange? Oh, yeah. And guys will argue about that. For sure. And you'll watch the wind flags. And some of them are blowing this way and some of them are blowing that way. Yes. It's not so much about can you hold still? It's <laughs> when are you pulling the trigger? You know, exactly. It, it, it's exactly. There, I don't want to say there's a science to it, but there's definitely like if you can pick out those right moments to put your scoring shots on paper, that's a big, big, big thing. What we've seen across the mid bore game, you know, the 25s, 30s, 35s in some cases, is well on its way to being uh, taken to a whole other level in 177 and 22 by, by some of these people. And you're starting to see some of those folks uh, engineer stuff into bigger caliber guns that are now getting used. I mean, for the first time we saw a couple Thomas guns at some of the competitions, you know, in 2021. It's a, it, you know, it's not a platform for everybody uh, and predominantly is done really well in field target and in that more traditional bench rest. But um, now we're seeing guys shooting, you know, some of those 22 like JSB redesigns and doing quite well, making, making the finals, you know, doing a... And that's another good point. JSB already had a great pellet. Yeah. And then they redesigned it. And I thought that was a joke. <laughs> when, when people told me on my blog, you should shoot the redesign. Well, what the heck is that? Right. So I look it up and, oh, I'll be, I'll be dying. Why, why would they do that? I found out. And that, by the way, is the pellet that that raw I talked about sure. shot in such a tight group. Yep. And I come to find out, that when they build the raws, that's the pellet. They build the 22 caliber raw yep. around. Yeah. So the technology is moving forward because of the long range. Even if you don't compete in long range, you're benefiting by it. Absolutely. And I think the thing to understand for folks at home is that it's not... <laughs> You are the limiting factor, yep. but even more than you, the wind will always humble you. And like I said before, it's one thing to shoot at home, maybe in the evening as the wind's calming down and think, man, I'm going to go shoot a 250. And you get out there and you're lucky to break 200. Right. All right. Because the wind is it just kicks all of our asses and that's what it's supposed to do it's about who can manage conditions the best and sure. and a lot of people are like man this is like a you know who's got the best supercar i don't think it's quite that i mean at the end of the day the guy pulling the trigger is always the loose nut and always has nine times out of ten anyway the best shooter is the guy at the top or the girl at the top well they seem to end up in the winner's circle all the time don't they exactly yeah yeah, what you notice is if you look across, there are a lot of people that are consistently making it into the finals. That's right. And what most of you don't see is how much practice these people do. Yeah. And that's a very real thing. So if you put the time in, you're usually going to get rewarded. I really got to find this gun before this video's over. I wonder how long it's going to be. I mean, geez, I hope everybody enjoys it. But heck, I got to find this gun. I don't even remember what video number this is. I gotta find this gun. How, I hope we have enough for six. I don't even remember what gun I came out here looking for anymore. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video today. Thanks for watching, we appreciate it a ton. I had a ton of fun making it with Tom and thanks again to the folks down at Air Force for helping us get it all filmed, giving us the location. It's pretty sweet. So hopefully you guys agree. If you do, throw us a like, we appreciate it a ton. Don't forget to subscribe as well because that keeps us going and comment down below. Let us know if you agree, disagree, whatever. Let us know, we'd love to hear from you and continue the conversation. Peace out.